Parsha is one of them. And it all started with her being interested in helping to conserve our murals. So um, there's so many great stories. Yes, you know, amazing new so legacies cool. and traditions. Exactly, yes. exactly. And our, our tiger family is everywhere. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> it's true. Yes. Well, I mean, we can't talk about Hannah Hall and the murals without having to, without seeing them and um, getting your, your take and your knowledge and wisdom of pieces that I have on file right, right now. So mm -hmm. if we can go ahead, let's do that. I'm going to share my screen, y'all. Um, let's see. And. Wow. Yes. So I'm. Okay, so um, they're not in any particular order, but if you like, we can start. Everyone, these are some That's of the pieces fine. that are hanging, uh, that are on the walls in Hannah Hall, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're on all the floors, correct? Correct. Most of the, the, the oldest ones are on the third floor. They move down to the second floor. The second floor has more images dealing with the civil rights movement. This particular mural is on the first floor. It was done in the early 70s. And as um, one of the things I, I really want to say, Roberto, is that um, when Dr. B Biggers came up with this idea to have the murals um, um, created and, and grace the walls of Hannah Hall, he did something that was really incredible. And that was not to censure the artists in any way. They were given a wall and they were free to express themselves in whatever manner they chose to. Um, the only requirement that Dr. Biggers and um, Professor Sims had was that the works had to be completed. If you did not complete that mural on your designated wall, it could possibly be painted over and given to another student. Right. But if you look at this one and you can see the, um, you know, the, the really tough subjects um, like drug abuse and, and um, this hand with a, a syringe going into the mind of the, the figure, um, nothing is off the table when it comes to what these young men and women are giving us to to consider and so there's you know this very graphic image um confronting us and then in the background he has figures of egyptian um queens you know within the the universe um and this united states on the side i think um refers to um, missiles and planetary exploration that you can see there on the upper left side um, a satellite moving you know through the universe so I, and I think the ultimate kind of message of this is you know African-American people people of African descent have this incredible legacy of creativity and at the same time there are um, forces of destruction that have to be um, dealt with um, among African people, and people of African descent. So this is an example, and we have, as I said, 128 murals on campus. So thank you, <laughs> Roberto, yes. for doing a sampling <laughs> of them. But this is um, kind of typical of the kinds of ideas that, um, our students think about. This is a, a, another mural that was done a little, um, it was, it's a little older than the one that we just saw. This was done in the mid 60s. And you can see how the artist is, is looking at the, re the relationship between Africa on the one hand and um, the demise of the black community on the other hand on the right side and in the middle of this lane so to speak um is this female figure stretched out and shackled so um the consciousness of our students it becomes apparent you know in the subject matter of these murals you can see at the top um a ship um possibly a slave ship 
Yes, like that middle people. passage right there. Mm -hmm. The middle passage. Um, and I, I find it interesting um, that there's this kind of um, quiet reflection of Africa on the left. Um, with the, the, the huts and the, the children surrounding the pot, the woman carrying um, bounty on her head. Um, and that's thunder in the background. Um, and then this line of um, cotton bales, which is a symbol for all of the labor, you know, the labor that um, Black people endured um, that helped to settle, you know, the South, the entire country. And then the, the, the contrast of um, these storefronts store against the skyscrapers of the background. And um, this is something that Dr. Biggers explored in his own paintings. If you look at, at his early work, um, he's, he's dealing with these same issues in a, Yes. So what I love about these is the expansiveness of the themes that these young artists are, are willing to tackle. Yes, and it's, it's, it's the history of the community. Just it is. The it's, it's, it, in the vein of oral tradition, it's, mm -hmm. it's pictorial no, presentation, it, yes. It absolutely is. Yes. And then we have this other one right here. Yes, uh, this is on the second floor. Um, this mural deals um, definitely with the, um, the Black Power movement. I believe this art, this is um, Benny Settles, and you can see um, the young women, the young people on the left side, the young woman with the afro. Um, the, the, it's, it so resonates with what we are experiencing today, you know, with the, the protests of young people and all wanting to make a statement um, through their own messaging. And then on the right side are members of the Black Panther Party um, who were such activists. And certainly here in Third Ward, they had um, the free breakfast program yes. for young people. So this really, in so many ways parallels um, what we are experiencing um, right now, you know? And that's what um, amazes people who come on campus and see the murals. There's another one that deals, it was in the 19, um, done in the early 70s and deals with police brutality and people who see it, oh, this, this could be yesterday. So it's almost as if Roberto, these artists, um, they were so aware of what was happening around them at the time that they, they knew that they had to put down these messages for the next generation, you know, to receive and to, to be able to reflect on. So yeah, this, is one of, this is one of my favorite murals and it's it's just a reminder of looking back and going yes the struggle is still here and there's still work to be done so much work to be done you know definitely and this perhaps is one of the most powerful murals created um and it, it it's the um creation of edward mills Edward Mills was a, a Texas Southern senior at the time. Every time I look at this mural, and for me, this is a sign of a great work of art. When you discover something else, each time you look at it, you can see in the background, there's obviously the reference to the American flag. And within that, you, you see all of these elements. There's Dr. King, um, in the midst of um, all of this turmoil, surrounded by barking dogs and um, police. police officers with billy clubs, he is um, speaking with such great force. And it wasn't until last 
I think last semester that one of the students pointed out that he had his arm raised. You know, as many times as I have looked at this mural, I hadn't noticed um, that he was he was preaching and talking with his his arm, his fist raised. Um, there is um, um, JFK, President Kennedy in the middle, and then on the part of the flag with the stars, you see. Bobby and Ted Kennedy, and then in the lower corner is um, um, Stokely Carmichael, um, Secretary, who led um, the Black Power Movement. And you see a young man holding the, um, the, the scales of justice in front of him with a, a boy next to him holding up a flame. Um, and then there's this figure in the front lifting up the flag. And that's where it gets really, really um, powerful. Because underneath this flag, you can see the Klansmen. And you can see the, the terror that they are um, inciting in, in various communities. And um, even on the bottom of the foot, of the man lifting up this flag is um, there are small um, figures um, who have have been enslaved and are seeking their freedom. And over in the the left um, corner, he has written in graphics: injustice, inequality, bigotry. Um, oh, wow. Can you make out what that bottom part uh, is? Black power. Black power. There we go. Thank you. So how current 